In the episode of Everyday Movie Recap that we will be talking about today, the movie where the crawdads sing, was based on Delia Owen's novels. As a result of the unexpected death of the town's most prominent figure, the girl who lives by herself in the marsh becomes the primary suspect in the murder case. Do you also think that Kaya was responsible for the death of Chase Andrews? Let's take a look back at how Catherine Kaya Clark survived alone in the marsh before becoming the primary suspect in Chase Andrews' murder case. Kaya lived with her mother, older brothers, and an abusive father. When their dad gets rougher one night, their mom leaves them, and Kaya chases her, but she won't look back. Mandy and Missy, her sisters, follow her brother Murph as the family leaves the house slowly. After several months, her brother Jody is ready to leave. Before he does, he tells Kaya to run into the swamp and go where the crawdads sing in case something goes wrong. Kaya and her dad are left by themselves. Tate Walker is the name of the boy she meets in the water, and they become friends right away. The shop owner, James Madison, treats them with respect and doesn't judge them based on how they look one day when her dad takes her there. Someone tells Mabel that she isn't getting enough food. Following this, she tells Kaya that if she goes to school, she could have a hot meal and meet new people. She even offers Kaya some clothes to make her want to go to school. To her surprise, Kaya runs into Tom in town when she gets to school. Kaya goes to class, but the other kids make fun of her looks, so she leaves and doesn't come back. She spends more time fishing with her dad later on. He becomes nicer to her and gives her a backpack to carry pebbles and feathers. After that, she gets a letter from her mom, and she is happy. It is given to her father, who reads it and then sets it on fire. He then informs Kaya that her mother will not be returning. By that evening, her father was mad and had set fire to everything that had to do with her mother. Later, he leaves Kaya alone in the house and doesn't come back. Soon, it became hard for her to stay alive because there was no more food or basic supplies. In order to get things, she goes to the swamp to collect mussels and sells them to Madison. Mabel then starts to help her in every way she can. Kaya is older now. Tate left some letters by the tree, and Kaya says she can't read any of them. He helps her learn to read and write, so she can talk to him and make her life better. Tate comes to Kaya's house for a few days and teaches her how to read and understand many other things. A guy from social services comes into Madison's store and asks about Kaya. He knows she's living alone and wants to place her in a group home, but he hasn't been able to find her when he's been to her house. Tate hears about the man from Kaya and considers it a good spot where she could enjoy a good meal. What she says is that she would never leave the water to live with a bunch of strangers. Tate tells Kaya that his mother and sister died in a car accident, which is why he never talks about his mother. Kaya tries to make him feel better when he starts to cry. He enthusiastically agrees to be her girlfriend. Tate nearly fell in love with Kaya by the river, but he changed his mind because he didn't want to make Kaya's life even worse. Tate one day tells everyone that he got into college and will be going in a week. Tate says he needs to do something, but Kaya leaves before he can explain. Tate comes to her house one night to stay with her one more night. He tells her about some publishers she can send all of her drawings and notes to before he leaves. He does this because he thinks her work is very special. Tate tells Kaya that he won't forget about her when he starts college, and he says they will meet again on July 4th. It's just Kaya and her drawings again when she's by herself. Kaya is thrilled to see Tate on July 4th so she heads to the beach. He doesn't show up all day, and Kaya starts to cry because she thinks he left her. She waited for Tate for what felt like an eternity before deciding it was time to move on. Kaya comes home that night to find a builder taking pictures of her house. When she gets to Madison's, the owner tells her that investors are buying land to build hotels. At the exit, she meets Chase and says yes to his date request. Kaya chooses to fight the developers for her house and gives the officer the deed. The officer says the house clearly belongs to her, but she needs to pay $800 in taxes to get it back. She uses the list of companies Tate gave her to send her work when she gets home. After going on a date together, Kaya and Chase quickly became friends and spent a lot of time together. The publisher responds to Kaya. They like her nature drawings and writing and want to print them right away. That night, she tells Chase that the companies have paid her, and Chase asks her to marry him. She says yes, and they make love at her house. Kaya then gives him a snail necklace she made. Tate is upset when he gets home from college and sees Kaya with Chase. Tate later hears Chase putting Kaya down, and they quickly start arguing. They almost fight. But James breaks them up. Kaya gets mad when Tate shows up at her house and starts throwing rocks at him until he starts to say sorry and explain himself. They talk about how she might be able to forgive him, but she doesn't know. Kaya goes to town one day and runs into Chase. He tells her that he is engaged to someone else, and she breaks up with him. She gets the book she wrote and the check from the publisher a few days later. Next month, she will be going to a meeting. She quickly pays the tax and fixes up her house with some of the money she saved. After joining the army, Jody finds Kaya, finds her book, and shows up one day. He says that he doesn't know about any other brothers and wouldn't be able to tell them apart if he saw them. Jody says their mother tried to take them back, but their dad told her he would beat them all if she did. After that, he said that their mother died of leukemia. In the store one day, Chase runs into Kaya and tries to get her back 
but she tells him to leave her alone. Then Chase hits her and starts to force himself on her. Using a rock, she hits him in the face. Someone hears her yell before she leaves that she will kill him if he bothers her again. After her run-in with Chase, Kaya goes back home. Because of what happened to her, she understands what her mother must have been through. She packs her things and goes on her boat. Two young boys found a body that belonged to Chase Andrews in the marsh. The body was located next to an abandoned fire tower. As soon as they see the body of a young guy, their fun ride turns into something very scary. The boys call the police, and Sheriff Jackson and Deputy Purdue from the town show up. Sheriff Jackson knows that the person who died is Chase Andrews. Soon, they start looking around the scene to find proof, but they can't find his tracks. The cops then look up and see the tower. As they go up the tower, thinking Chase may have fallen from the high tower, they see a broken grate. Deputy Purdue thinks it might have been an accident, but Sheriff Jackson isn't sure. The autopsy results for Chase came in. The quick impact of the fall is what killed the person, says the doctor. They learn that everything doesn't match up with how he is lying on the ground. They decide that someone killed the person and says that they couldn't find any footprints, not even Chase's. After that, the doctor says that they found some red threads on Chase's jacket. People in the town hear that Chase was killed and wonder who did it since he had a great family in life. Someone reported hearing Kaya threatened to murder Chase if he continued to annoy her. Lots of people talk about it. Soon after, the sheriff and deputy overheard. They decide to pay Kaya a visit. They get to her house but can't find Kaya. They look around and see a red cap which makes them think it might be the fiber they found on Chase's jacket. Kaya is hidden in the woods, and she lets out a gasp as the police leave. When the sheriff and his police team go into the swamp to look for Kaya, they find her trying to get away. When the deputy comes after her, she jumps off the boat and runs away. People are very mean to her, as she is being taken to jail. While Kaya is in jail, she meets Tom Milton, a lawyer who is ready to take her case. He tells Kaya how important her case is and that people will judge her in court, during the interrogation in court. Kaya's editor later says that they met again the next morning. Chad's lawyer has proof that Kaya stayed at a hotel near the bus stop. Later, Tom stands up for Kaya by telling her that she can't really leave town on the bus without being seen. It's also said that Kaya can't really find Chase in the middle of the night, lure him to the tower, and kill him in less than an hour. Another person who works for Kaya says it doesn't make sense. He ends by telling the judges to make a decision based on the facts. Tate, the Madisons, and Jody came to help Kaya. After hours of deliberation, the jury found Kaya not guilty. The judge apologizes to Kaya for the accusations and for the time she served. Tate and Kaya resume their relationship. He proposes marriage to her. Kaya thought they were already in a relationship. Jody's family frequently pays Kaya a visit while she is still writing books. She also went to Jane's funeral. Kaya and Tate are still living in a marsh. They get older together. In her final moments, she has a vision in which she perceives her mother's spirit approaching her creating the illusion that they have merged. Tate later discovers Kaya's body in the boat at their dock. Later, as Tate sorts through Kaya's belongings, he discovers a book containing a poem. According to the poem, sometimes the predator must die in order for the prey to live. Tate then discovers Chase's drawing in the missing seashell necklace with bloodstains, and he realizes Kaya murdered him. Tate throws the seashell into the swamp to protect her legacy. The entire film encourages self-sufficiency and trusting ourselves. Many times in our lives, we will feel alone and unsupported. That's why we should always trust ourselves and believe we can bounce back like Kaya. The movie also teaches us to treat others gently and not abuse their kindness, since you never know what they might do to you. We appreciate you taking the time to watch the Everyday Movie Recap. Please like and subscribe.